Now that we have created a blade design in QBlade, we need to export it out to our CAD software. As I had mentioned earlier in the previous video, you need to be using an airfoil section with a trailing edge that's closed. And that's because when you bring geometry into CAD software, you can't have any gaps between facets. And if you leave that trailing edge open, there are gaps there that the CAD software doesn't like. We're going to come up here to Blade Rotor. We're going to export the 3D blade geometry as an STL. And then we're going to call it, we'll just leave it a uh, new blade. I'm going to put it in my directory where I do all my wind turbine stuff. And when I hit save, it's going to ask how many points do we want from the from the leading edge to the trailing edge? And I think that what I've been using is I've been taking this to 50 and exporting it. If you leave it at 20, you don't get very good resolution so that when you bring that into your CAD software, um, it's, it's all sort of pixelated. Now that we have our blade file saved, let's double click on that and look at it in the Windows STL file viewer. And if we zoom in on the leading edge, we can see that there are facets on that leading edge, but they're not, it's not horribly, it's not horribly faceted. It's fairly smooth. I have printed these blades with these settings before and the blades that you get turn out really nicely. So let's stick with those settings. The next step in the process is we need to open up a piece of software called Salome. And this is another free piece of software that you need to download. This software is the software that we're going to use to convert the STL file to a step file. And the step file is the format that CAD software wants to bring it in as a solid model. In Salome, there are different modules, and you want to click here and go to Geometry. And then you go to Import, and you're going to import the STL file that we just created. Wind turbine. So there's the file, and it takes it a minute to process it, so I'm not going to make you guys watch that. Okay, it's imported. There it is. Okay, so there's the geometry that I just imported. I can zoom in and inspect it. Now's the time to re-emphasize the importance of using a closed trailing edge airfoil, because if you use an open trailing edge airfoil, when this STL file is imported, the trailing edge surfaces don't meet and the software will try to join them up by throwing in sort of random pixelated shapes into place and, and, it, and it ends up corrupting the file. So you need to use a closed trailing edge airfoil. And if you do, then this process will work smoothly. If you don't, you're gonna create trouble for yourself. To export this geometry, we want to click on it here and select it, go to File, export and export it as a step file and we're going to keep that same name you'll notice that there are length units here i have tried changing this to millimeter since that's what we were working in but it hasn't worked out right it, it, it ends up messing up the scaling in the cad software so if you leave this as meter then that will simplify things later so hit save and it'll take it a little while to save it because this is there are lots and lots of points in here. So it's saving that file now. Okay, now that it's exported, we just close the Salome software. Don't have to save anything about it. No. And I'll close that. Now I'm going to go into my Creo software and work on bringing this blade in place. Now, um, for those of you who are using different CAD packages, the details of how this works are gonna be different for all of the, the different CAD softwares. The user interface to do the operations are gonna be different. But if you want to, you can follow along while I do this in Creo, um, just to understand sort of the concepts 
for how I build a blade in CAD using the geometry that we have created. Now for me in Creo, the first step in the import process is to open up a start part that I use for all of my parts. So this is an empty part. It has datum planes in it. And I'm going to change the units to meters because that's what we saved the step file in in Salome. So in this one, in order to do that, you have to go into a whole bunch of menus. I'm going to change it to meters. And now I go to get data and I say import and I'm going to import a step file and the one I'm going to get is the new blade and I just accept the defaults and say okay and now it takes a good while for this to import because um, it's, it's a large file so I uh, will edit this so that you don't have to sit and watch that okay we are imported now now we need to go back and change the units back to millimeters so I have to accept this as a good feature. Okay, there's our feature. Um, let's go back and change the units to from meters to millimeters. So units, we're going to go to millimeters, set. We're going to convert them. Close, close. Okay, now let's do a check and make sure that the units are correct. So if I hit measure and I measure from the center to the bottom of the blade, let's just pick a little facet here. It's giving us 34 millimeters, which is the correct units for the um, radius of the hub. And if I measure the distance from the bottom of the blade to the top of the blade, I should get 350 millimeters, which is correct. If I come in here and put in a datum plane, so let's go plane, and we're going to offset it from the center, 34 plus uh, 350 divided by 2. This is the plane where the two pieces of blade will be separated. So I'll print one in this uh, from this half and I'll print this one from that half. Just to show that this is a solid body, if I select this plane and use it to cut, say okay, I'm able to perform solid modeling operations on this imported blade geometry. So from now on, I'm able to cut, extrude, make holes, do whatever I want to do with this geometry. And now that I've checked to make sure that that works properly, I'm going to say file, save a copy, and change it from the start part name. We'll call it um, demo blade base. In the next video, I'll show you how I go about using this geometry to make uh, printable parts that I can then assemble to make a blade.